Hey guys, the last video on class diagrams on their own then to solve trick equations. So, we've looked at using class diagrams uh, to solve trick equations with positive values, with negative values. Now, we're going to take a look at solving them in uh, slightly different intervals. So, in the last two videos, we were solving for theta between 0 and 360. That's not always the interval that we want to play with. So in this one, we're changing the intervals up a little bit. Let's get cracking. Okay, so here is our class diagram. So, it's really important now to realise that when we go anti-clockwise around the class diagram, so if we are going this way around, so anti-clockwise we go anti-clockwise to find positive values so we go anti-clockwise for positive theta in this one though we're going to be looking sometimes for values of theta that are negative so quite logically we go clockwise to find a negative values of theta. So we go clockwise for negative theta. Okay, right, now we're on with that, let's go. Okay, example one then, so we want to solve uh, sine of theta equals one half for theta between minus 270 and positive 90. So we start off in exactly the same way that we've done all the others. Here we are solving sine of theta equals a positive value. So the first thing we want to do is identify the quadrants in which sine of theta is positive. So that is in quadrant one where all of the functions are positive and in quadrant 2 where we have the s. Okay, so just as we've done before, we're going to call this angle x and this angle over here is exactly the same. It's also angle x. So we can actually get our first solution normally so we want theta between minus 270 and 90 so there is going to be one solution in this first quadrant which is just going to be angle x so to do that we're going to do uh, the inverse sine of positive one half and that is going to give us 30 degrees. So what this actually tells us, it tells us two things. It tells us angle X is 30 degrees and also one of our values of theta is 30 degrees. Okay, now that that is the only positive solution of theta that we want. Uh, anything greater would be bigger than 90 which is out of our interval so we don't care. So now we want to get values uh, less than 0 but greater than 270. So to do that we're going to go anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis around until we hit our blue line. So, this is going to be another value of theta. Now this is going to be, well, if we went from the positive x-axis around to the negative x-axis, that would give us minus 100 and 80 degrees but we're then going around 
another x or another minus x. So to get to the blue line we're doing minus 180 minus 30 and that is going to give us minus 210. So that is the only negative value that we're interested in. The other one would be if we went all the way around to our blue line in quadrant one, but that would be out of our interval going around to the positive y-axis would be minus 270 degrees. So those are the only two that we need. So our values of theta are theta equals minus 210 and positive 30 good times now I'm going to whack a part B on this question if a part B then we want to solve the same equation but this time in the interval theta is between positive 360 and positive 540 now you might be thinking but the cast diagram only takes us around to 360 degrees. Well, if you just keep going around, then you can get up to however big an angle you want to. So, if we go all the way around the diagram, then we would have gone a 360 degree rotation. But if we don't stop there and we keep going around, the positive y-axis would now be 360 plus 90, which is 450. And then if we kept on going still, the negative x-axis would be 540 degrees. So now we do exactly the same as we usually do. Find the quadrants. Our sign is positive, so that's quadrant 1, and then we mirror that line in quadrant 2, so let's call this angle X, and this guy is also angle X then. So, we can even start by finding the value of X in the complete same way that we have done before. So, inverse sine of X Oh, we just did it, sorry, inverse sine of one half, we just did it, x is 30 degrees. So we know then that x is equal to 30 degrees. Now that is not one of our solutions, though. it's not in our interval. So, to get our first value of theta, we know Theta is going to be, so this time we're not starting at 0 degrees, we're starting at 360 degrees. So our first value is theta equals 360 plus 30, which is 390. Okay, and then to get our other value, we want this angle from the positive x-axis around to the second blue line. Now we know that angle is 540 minus 30. So that is going to be 510. So our two values for theta are theta equals 390 and the other value is 510. Good times. Okay, example two, we want to solve cos of theta is minus 0 0.6 between minus 360 and positive 180 to one decimal place. So, this time be careful 
we are solving a trig equation with a negative value. So we want the quadrants in which cos is negative. So cos is negative in quadrant two. So we're going to draw a line out of the circumference. This is angle x. And then that is reflected down into quadrant three. Because cos is also negative in that. Now let's first of all work out the positive solution. So if we inverse cos of minus 0 0.6 We can get to one decimal place uh, 126.8 9. So that gives us our first value for theta. So theta is 126.9 times. That also allows us to work out the value of x. So we know that this whole angle here is 126.9. But we know that this part is 90. So x is actually equal to 126.9 minus 90. So x is 36.9 degrees. So that's going to help us down here. We now know that x is 36.9 degrees. Okay, so we've got our solution for positive values of theta. Now we want to play in the negative part, the negative part of the interval. So, we're now going to go anti-clockwise. So we want to go around like that until we get to our first blue line. So, this angle is actually negative. So this is going to give us theta is, it's actually just a mirror image of this whole angle up the top. So this is going to be negative 126.9. So that gives us another value for theta. So theta is negative 126.9 degrees. And now we're going to have one more in our given interval which is going to be between the positive x-axis and our second blue line. So, what we need to do here is to work out the size of this angle. So, we know that x is 36.9 so this part of the angle, let's call it y. So we know that y is 90 minus uh, 36.9. Now we know that because this whole thing here is a right angle. Now 90 minus 36.9 is... Uh, 53.1 so y is 53.1 degrees so this whole orange angle from the positive x-axis all the way around to the second blue line so our orange theta now remember we're going anti-clockwise so it's negative angles 
is going to be minus 180. Minus. I'm running out of room here. Let's just move that back. So it's minus 180. Minus the 53.1. So that's going to give us theta equals minus 233.1. So there is our third and final value of theta. So theta is minus 233.1 degrees. So there are our three values. 126.9, minus 126.9, and minus 233.1. Good times. Okay, so I just want to say after that one, obviously that got quite messy. Look at that. Look at the state of that. So personally, I don't like using class diagrams. I would much prefer just to sketch the graph and solve them like that. But we need to know how to do these. We're learning a new tool so that we have a choice of methods to do stuff. So we can do one more example with tan. Okay, last example then we want to solve tan of theta equals 1.5 uh, for theta between minus 180 and positive 180 to the nearest degree. So we're solving to a positive value. We first of all then need the sectors where tan is positive. So that's 1 and 3. So we draw a diameter going through both sectors. Now it's always the angle between the line that we've drawn and uh, the last axis that we meet in an anti-clockwise direction that we call x. So this angle is x. Now it's also going to be one of our values for theta. So if we inverse tan uh, 1.5 to the nearest degree we get 56 degrees. So that is one of our values for theta. It's in our interval so it's definitely the guy that we want. So, using vertically opposite angles, this guy here is also angle X. So, there's going to be no other solutions between 0 and positive 180. So, we now just need our solution in the negative quadrant or in the negative interval. So, we're going clockwise until we hit the blue line. So, that value of theta, because we're going clockwise, it's minus 180, or, yeah, so it's minus 180, but, if we're at minus 180, that's taking us all the way to the negative x-axis. So we actually then want to come back in an anti-clockwise direction. So we then add 56. So minus 180 plus 56 is uh, minus 124. So that is our other value for theta. Theta is minus 100. And 24 good times. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Take it easy.